Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be playing Pavlov's House. This is a Dan Versen Games game uh, designed by David Thompson. And this is actually the PC version of it, which was created by Bookmark Games. And it is essentially identical to the board game, except you don't actually have a board and pieces and so on and so forth. And then game rolls the dice for you and everything. But you do see the dice roll results and everything. So this is actually a pretty good... Uh, digital adaptation of the of the board game so um, for those of you unfamiliar it's from the valiant defense series there are I think uh, four or five of these games now um, off the top of my head I know there's this one uh, castle itter soldiers and postmen uniforms and Lanzareth Ridge and I think that's all of them um, but I'm not 100% sure so um, I'm sure if I'm wrong, somebody will uh, correct it in the uh, comments. But in the meantime, I'm going to start a new game. We'll play the basic, just so you can kind of see the game. Uh, that's basically the thrust of this. Uh, so the, the other versions add kind of additional rules, optional rules, uh, more advanced rules that make the game a little bit more difficult once you've mastered the basic strategies and so on. So... Uh, the game's played in phases. We have three various maps here right at the top. You have the house itself, Pavlov's house. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the background on this, um, Pavlov's house was a strong point for the Soviets during the Battle of Stalingrad in uh, 9 January Square, I believe, is where it was located. Uh, the Germans obviously tried to uh, take it but did not. It became kind of a uh, famous beacon of the success of the Red Army during the Second World War and something that was celebrated and uh, it's named after a, uh, a soldier who kind of was involved in the defense of the house uh, the eponymous Pavlov and he is in the game uh, your your counters that you have for, for your forces are individual soldiers and you build a defensive team for your for your strong point and that's this map here and you have three different uh, colors red green and purple and that these represent lines of sight outside the house into the square and you can see here we have six different paths of approach for the german forces two green three red one purple you also have your divisional headquarters here for the 13th guards rifle division their command post uh, the army command post is on the third map, so kind of you get more of a zoomed out view. We go from the, the up close and personal inside the house to kind of the area around the house and then the battleground itself, which, you know, this is this is obviously the, the west bank of the Volga. This is the Volga River. And then we have the east bank. And so on the east bank, you have some anti-aircraft battalions, some artillery locations. You have the flotilla that will carry your uh, supplies across the river. And so one of the actions you can do with, with cards, this is kind of a card-driven game with dice used for um, making some determinations for the solitaire part of it. And uh, because the solitaire system runs the Germans, you run the Soviets. And uh, so you would use cards to buy supplies out of stock. They go into the staging area, and then you, can, you have flotilla cards that you can play, assuming you get them, and you will, but maybe not always when you want them or need them most. And that's how you transition uh, stuff from the East Bank to the West Bank and get it into the house to help you defend the house. So uh, it's played in phases, Soviet card phase, the uh, Wehrmacht, card phase the soviet movement phase and the soviet action phase so we will start with the card phase you get uh, four cards and as you can see the cards have two sections upper and lower you can choose one action to play here and each thing will have um, typically has a couple of different two to three maybe um, actions you can do with the card as you can see by hovering over the Volga military flotilla, you can recover, which just that's kind of fixing it after a Stuka comes along and bombs it and it gets disrupted, which we will see. Um, you can load supplies and then deliver supplies. So you kind of have to do the load supplies 
and then deliver supplies. So right now we don't have any supplies, but we can use this 62nd Army Command Post to load supplies from stock into the staging area and then use the flotilla card to actually load them up. Now, because these two are on the same card, I can't do them both in the same turn. You have to pick one. Um, so this one actually, um, in an ideal situation, the 62nd Army would be on a third card and I could do that, load some stock, use one Volga flotilla card to load it onto the boats and then use the other one to actually deliver it into the house. I'm not going to be able to do the whole the whole one, two, three step there because that's just how it is. So usually what I do, because we know they have Stukas and usually the first turn they, they hit you with one or maybe even two air raids. I, I, actually, I think I've actually seen three air raids on the first turn. So I always want to get, if I can, get an anti-aircraft battery set up so that can, if that'll take on one raid basically. Um, you have four slots. So in theory, if you only assigned, if you had the ability to, or you were able to over the course of several turns, most likely get all four of these active, then you could take on, um, you could send up a whole lot of anti-aircraft fire, or you could spread it out if you were thinking that they might have more than one raid. And you don't know what's coming. You don't know what's coming. You don't know what the Germans have. Um, you don't know what their cards are going to give you. So I'm gonna load some supplies. Now you need food, which is this guy right here. Every five men, and we have four currently, we start with four. Every five men requires one food. So right now I can feed them twice. And the the, uh, the card that basically requires you to feed your men, that's that comes up in the German hand as well, and you don't know when that's coming. So it will occur a couple times at least during the game. And as you build up your forces, you can have 20 or more men in your in there, and you're going to need four foods to feed them and if that card comes up and you don't have enough supplies your men starve and you can end up losing some of your men um, or you can offset that a little bit if you have first aid but again you'll need a lot each um, each first aid takes care of one man so um, this is a kind of a resource management uh, task allocation type of game and you never have enough of what you need you can never do as much as you want so you kind of have to prioritize and take chances and things like that. So it's an entertaining game. Um, as is true with all of David Thompson's games, it's well designed and uh, you know cleverly put together and it's a challenge. So we are going to get underway. Obviously I've already done something. I'm going to load up my um, supplies here. I'm gonna take uh, one, I'll take two food. You, have, you can uh, take five, so I'm gonna take this stuff and then I will take also I'm gonna take two I'll skip the ammunition for now so and I can only load three onto boats so I'm gonna do that next load, load our supplies I'm gonna take one of each item okay now you see we've gone on to the Wehrmacht card phase they also have uh, they get three cards so again, here we go. We have a, a, a JU-87 Stuka inbound, uh, two of them. Each bomb represents one aircraft, essentially. It's gonna do one piece of damage unless I manage to shoot them down. So you can activate your anti-aircraft unit, hit done, and I hit one. So one is down and they're gonna do one damage. So they're gonna hit something. And as soon as I click the card, it'll show us what gets hit. So we lost one of our artillery batteries. It's been disrupted. You can recover it with an artillery card on your next uh, card phase. So now we've drawn a unit. So this unit is going to appear on one of these rows. And he goes into row five. So here you see him up here. Okay, these uh, have two values, a suppression value and a defense value. And then we get an attack on the building. So basically the a die roll will determine which which um, which area gets attacked, green, red, or purple, and then they'll, then it'll resolve the attack as well. So attack on the red wall failed. So this this was the dice dice roll, and they don't have any. Uh, they have only the one unit, so it they didn't roll enough to actually get any damage on the wall. All right, so here are our initial four units. So you have Pavlov. 
he's a commander so he you can see here he's got some numbers this is attack suppress this means he's got the command ability and the storm ability so I'm going to put him I always put him in the radio room because from the radio room you can actually bring in reinforcements you get two reinforcement points which you can use to buy units so I try to have somebody in there and because I don't use him a lot for combat um, I, I'm not gonna say I never use him for combat because that wouldn't be true but um, there are better units and you have a limited number of moves in your action phase and I usually end up using those moves with more powerful units like machine guns and anti-tank guns and uh, there's one unit Chekhov who is a uh, really efficient killer <laughs> put it that way uh, and he's good he, um, he's really good at killing off German infantry so I use I will purchase him at some point and use him as well so now I can deploy I have two moves remaining I can deploy two of these guys so we'll take Alexandrov and we'll put put him in this red green slot which has a line of sight to both red and green which is nice to have because it's in the corner and we'll do the same thing with the red and purple on this side so now I have some coverage here and now we go to the action phase so because we have a guy up here I can actually attack him twice I can use both these guys um, you need to roll higher than their defense rating or the same or you have to equal or exceed their defense rating to kill him so with an attack rating of one you get one die so if he rolls with the one die gets a four five or six he'll kill him so we'll take Glushenko here and let him attack we pick him and it failed we rolled a one so now I can do the same thing with Alexandrov. We can sh take a sh second shot at him. And he got him. He rolled a five. I killed the unit. So we killed the, uh, the first German unit. And your score here is based on... Um, you can get storm groups. So we'll talk about that later. Uh, operational support's not active in this because it's the basic game. And then you get points for having how many units you have and how, and you lose points for how many Wehrmacht units there are on the board. And it's going to get hairy later and then the Germans will have several units, hopefully not too many. Um, but that kind of depends on your strategy, what units you have available, what happens with the dice and the cards as to what you can do. Um, there is some luck involved, but because it's a dice-based game and there's always that random element, so... Uh, you try and you try and kill the German units because having them be in these tracks is bad and generally if they get close to the house and get into the house you lose the game so you know um, some of these tracks are two most of them are two this one has three and then you have the uh, forward defense areas where you can put a sapper but th that's also a spot for a German unit so if we get three here and then they push another one into row three and that's going to end that's going to basically get into the house and you're going to lose all right so pavlov has a has an action as well we have three we have one left since we use two uh, attack actions up here so he has the reinforce ability because he's in the radio position and the uh, guards division headquarters is not disrupted so a stuka attack can disrupt this and then that removes this ability until you repair so I can come in here and I get two points that I can buy somebody with so what I typically do in this situation is I use it to buy a machine gun because then I can buy machine gunners in a future turn either with a card for reinforcements or just have Pavlov do it but hopefully we'll get a card because that's much better and Pavlov only gets two points through the radio uh, you get six if you draw a reinforcement card. So now we're in turn two, Soviet card phase. Okay, so we do have a 13th Guards Rifle Division command post. So we can do a reinforce with this. Now we also got a Fog of War card, which is just a card we don't know what it is. You can use your Signal Battalion to reveal this card, but that costs a card play, and we only have three. So... Unless you think everything else sucks, I usually just leave these be uh, because you end up playing two cards for one, essentially. So I was hoping we'd get another flotilla card so I could, you know, deliver these, but didn't happen. So I'm going to take this one for the reinforcement. Now I did buy a gun, so now I need somebody to shoot it. 
and this number in yellow is their cost. So I can buy Anakin who costs three, but he's got the Inspire ability as well as being a machine gunner. So we'll take him and then I'll find another machine gunner and I can take like uh, Chait who's only one. So that now I've spent four as you can see down here and I can buy two. I can spend two for somebody else. So um, I can do that or I can buy like a, a second machine gun. I can buy um, an anti-tank gun. You have the light anti-tank guns. They're also a heavy machine gun and a heavy anti-tank gun. <clears throat> So, I don't have enough to buy one of these. I could buy another um, another unit. I could buy like an anti-tank guy and stick him in there so that I would have him for the future. If I get another reinforced card, I could buy the heavy anti-tank gun, which is slightly better. It has an attack rating of uh, four as opposed to three. So that's an extra die and that's really worth having because the Panzers are hard to kill. Um, their defense, I believe, ranges from four to six. So when you get some of the heavier ones in there, uh, Panzer IVs that have a defense rating of six, those are obviously hard to kill because you literally need to roll a six to kill it. So it may be worthwhile to, to hold on and hope to get one of these, but then you still have to figure out what do I want to buy with the other two. Now here's Chekhov, see he costs six. Now Mav is one is like Pavlov, except not quite as good because he doesn't have the um, suppress ability. But he's also four. There are three total commanders: Pavlov, Now Mav, and Afanasyev, who's up here. Afanasyev, I guess, is how you would pronounce that. Those three guys. If you have all three of them, you get an extra action. Also, if you fill in, uh, if you build. Uh, uh, wires in here all four you would get uh, uh, the fourth action as well that's a second way to get a fourth action so um i do have to decide who i'm going to buy with my other and i think what i will do is um hmm. this is always a tough decision i guess i will buy Uh, um, what I could do is drop him and take the two machine gunner who's up here, Varnov. Now I've spent three and I can buy the heavy machine gun or the heavy anti-tank gun. I'm going to take the anti-tank gun, confirm. Now I have um, two more cards I can play. So I'm going to take uh, the 1083rd. I'm going to put another anti-aircraft in. Now I have either the 62nd Army Command Post or the Signal Battalion. So with the Signal Battalion, you can put wire comms in here that I just described. Um, with this one, obviously, you can buy uh, resupply. So I'm going to do that. We'll take uh, one of, and I'll take, and I'm going to take one of these. So you have the most, you can see your stock and it goes up eventually. Um, so you get, you get reloads once in a while, but you can only buy so much at a certain time. So now we go back to the German phase. So they're, they're going to stick another rifleman in row five. They're going to stick a scout in row two. And we get another bombing raid, so I'm glad I bought some any aircraft. And we actually hit twice, and it was only two, so that we shot both Stukas down, no damage. So that was really nice. Um, so we're in pretty good shape. We've got one artillery battery down. Um, there's also um, forward observers that you can buy that you can call in artillery, place an artillery marker in here, and it can hit two adjacent spots here in any of the rows. So if you end up, as as we will at some point, having multiple guys in a, in a row, you can, if you have a forward observer and you have drawn a card that lets you activate one of your artillery positions, you can actually attack two of them at once with three die for each one. So that's good to have. Um, and it can kill tanks as well. All right, so we're going to put Voronov 
Um, I guess we'll go green for now. Eventually I'm going to put my, I like to put my, uh, my crude weapons in corners so that they can cover multiple areas. But for now we will just do this and I'll put, uh, and Chernogolov, we'll put um, we'll put him in purple for now. All right, so now we're in the action phase again. Now it costs two because there's two men in here, you know, Voronov and Chait. So if I were to use the, my machine gun, which I'm going to, to attack this guy, uh, you're taking two actions of your three. So that's only going to leave me with one further action. Um, which I would probably use to just recover Pavlov. He's exhausted. Once you take an action, you become exhausted and you have to be recovered. One of the nice things about having the command ability is you can um, recover three of the other units. So Pavlov, Naumov, and Afanashev can all recover three other, three other units, three other counters. So two, you're two here in a crude weapon and maybe Alexandrov or something like that. So we've got our three guys here. We're going to attack with the machine gun. We're going to hit that. It, it highlights in red the units that you're eligible to shoot at. So we rolled a one and a six. The six was good enough to kill him. So that's good. We've killed another German and we keep that track clear. We don't have a shot up here in red. I could have put Chernogolov up here, I guess, in hindsight, and he would have been able to take a shot. Um, but I do. Want, I did want to recover Pavlov anyway, so I'm just going to recover him, and now we go on to turn number three. Okay, so what do we got? We got our flotilla. Uh, I do have a 13th guards I can use over here, so I'm going to deliver this. And you can see we now have one first aid, one sapper, three um, food that can feed 15. Right now I would need two. And then uh, 10 ammo for a suppressive fire. So each one of these ammo tokens gives you five suppression. And I haven't even done suppression yet, but, but we will. We'll get to that. Um, all right, so I do want my reinforcements. Now I bought. If you look in your reserves, it'll show you what you already have. So I have an I have a an anti an anti tank gun. So I know I have that, but I'm actually not going to buy the anti tank gun right now. I mean an anti tank crew right now because usually the Panzers don't show up until a little bit later. So I'm going to take Chekhov. Now you can take Chekhov, or you could do uh, like Naumov or um, Afanas Afanashev. But I really like Chekhov because he's a, like I said, he's a he's a stone cold killer. He's got four. He rolls four dice, and he's pretty much he's pretty deadly. He doesn't kill every time, but with four dice, you have a reasonably good chance of killing an infantry unit, most of whom's defensive ratings are going to be either fours or fives. All right, so now we have, um, well, we have sappers. I could actually deploy a sapper. Which would be able to, which would let me put somebody in here, or if they had damaged one of the walls, you could do that. I'm not, that's not really particularly useful at the moment. So I'm going to take my artillery and I'm going to recover this guy. And now the Germans will go. And we have a bomb, bomb raid, which I do not have air, any aircraft this time. So we're going to lose three areas here. So two anti aircraft and one of our wire communications. Now we have an attack on the building. Purple wall succeeded. So here's what I was talking about with the sapper. The wall start at six, they go down to three. And then once you get below three, you basically lose your defense here at that wall and you start losing your men that are defending it. Oh, a second bomb run. So we're now down uh, six and we lost one of these, which is important. You also don't want to let this fill up because then you end up in a situation where they'll Hit your army command post, and then if they go again, they can actually end the game because there's nowhere for them to, uh, like they're they've damaged damaged everything so much that you basically lose. Um, I'm gonna put Chekhov out, and we only have one unit in here, and I'm gonna stick him right here so that he can take a shot at this guy. I'll leave the machine gun there, or the anti tank gun rather there, because there's nothing to do with that. So now you can skip to the next phase. Yes, I know I have two 
left. So now we're in the action phase. So I know I do. I know I want to do this. We rolled the, the magic six, but the other three all were misses essentially. So still good. We knocked. We knocked out the the last German unit on the board. Now I can use uh, Pavlov to recover. So you use command, and we're going to recover. Um, I want to recover my machine gun, and I'm going to recover one of these two corners. So I usually go green first because there's two greens and only one purple. So I would like to put this machine gun in this corner. So I'm going to recover them because you can't move them if they're exhausted. So now on my next movement phase, I can swap these two. And then I have my machine gun in an area where it's going to be able to cover four of the six tracks. So that's... Um, and then you can actually use another one to either lay down suppressive, suppressive fire. So I'll do that. I'll show you suppress, suppressive fire. So Chernogolov has a one for attack and suppress. So if I click suppress purple, it's going to take one of these here and it's going to lay uh, one level of suppression, which will show in this box. And what that does is you get one die to roll against any German unit that shows up on the purple track. And you can roll one die and see if you can kill him before he even gets onto the track. Back to the card phase. Okay, so here we have. I'm going to use this, I think, to kind of start repairing some stuff that the uh, that the air raids uh, damaged. So I'm going to use my Volga flotilla, and I'm going to recover that. So I have all three available again, and then I'm going to take one of these, and I'm going to put one for any aircraft, just in case, and then I'm going to recover this other one. And that's it. You get three. Three plays. So here's our first resupply. I have seven units. It's going to cost me two, so that'll leave me with one food. Two food consumed this turn. Okay, so this is our resupply. Now there, there's the first Panzer. He appeared in row one. Now we have an assault. So the, the assault means they're going to hit all three walls. So they first try to suppress. So uh, they didn't suppress in the green because they don't have any infantry. They don't have any infantry at all, so none of the suppression will work. Now we go to the wall attacks, and you need tanks for that. So they do have a panzer, so we will get um, an attack on the green wall, but it failed. The red wall and the purple wall won't be able to be attacked because there are no panzers in those areas. So that's good. When you get one of those and they don't have a lot of units on the, on the board, those are easy to defend and basically don't do much damage at all. So now I need to build out some my anti-tank forces and I need four reinforcement points to do that because each anti-tank uh, counter, uh, you know, each soldier that can crew an anti-tank gun is at least two reinforcement points and I don't have any currently. So we're going to now, we're in the movement phase and I'm going to swap my uh, machine gun crew up here now Alexandrov gets bumped down here, and I'm just going to stick him back in the green slot. So basically they just changed places. And I have one move remaining, but I'm not going to move anybody else. And uh, we are just going to move on to our action phase. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recover Pavlov. Then I'm going to recover Chekhov. And I will use Alexandrov, I think, to put some suppression down on the green. All right, so now I have one point of suppression on green and one point on purple. Back to the card phase. All right, so we, need, we know we need reinforcements. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to buy, and I have two reinforcement cards that I could use. So I know I have, I know, I, well, not Anakin. I want my anti-tank guy here, Sug, Sugbida. And then you can also buy uh, just a regular anti-tank gun, like Yakomenko or Merziev. So now you have five. I can buy one more. And one point, guys, a lot of those guys are either mortar crewmen or uh, machine gunners. So I will at some point have a second machine gun. Uh, you also have some one level attack capable counters. 
Um, I don't know. It's 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 always a tough call what what to do at this point. I will take. Um, well, and here are your forward observers that you use for artillery. I usually pick them up a little later because they. Um, you have to have some Germans. It, it really only pays to use artillery when you have two, two German units in, in a track, which we obviously do not right now. So I have one left. I'm just going to use it on, I think I'm going to use it on a mortar crewman. So we'll just take Chernyshenko here for our sixth. Now, here's where you have a bit of a decision to make, right? We can... We can um, Activate artillery, not really worth it because I don't have a forward observer and they don't have two units on there. So I'm going to, I know I can use this card for the 62nd army post and pull in some more, or some more supplies. I don't really need to do that in my opinion at the moment. So the temptation is to use the artillery, the any aircraft here and another reinforcement. So that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, <clears throat> I'm going to hit reinforce. I'm actually going to take Afanashev for four, and then I have two more I can spend. I can take my other Mortarman, or I can take um, the Mortar itself. So it's, it's really six of one, half a dozen of another. You're going to need two Mortarmen to actually crew the thing. The nice thing about a Mortar is you get a suppression of six, which is really nice. Um, but I only have two points left. So I could take like a one point infantryman and the other mortarman and then use um, Pavlov's reinforce ability if I wanted to, to pull in the mortar. So I think what I will do is I will just buy Grindin or Greedin. So now we have our Yeah, so that's good. That'll work for me. And then I'll use my anti-aircraft and I'll ready one. And now I have two if the air raid comes in. And it does. Okay, so the, the question you ask yourself now is do I want to use both of these to have a you know double the chance of hitting this guy? And I usually do it because honestly, I don't know that I'll get a second air raid this turn. Of course, you also you know, this is two cards I'm using to do this, but it's worth it in my opinion. And we only got one hit anyway. So they're still going to do damage. They took out one of the anti-aircraft. And, of course, they did have a second one. And so they're doing a lot of damage here with those cards. So now we get a suppression. This is their mortar. And they hit, of course, they hit my machine gun. Um, not a big deal. They don't have any infantry, so I couldn't attack with it anyway, but still kind of annoying. All right, so now we're in our reserve phase again. So I have my anti-tank gun. I'm going to put that out. So we have Sugbida. I'm going to put him right here, and then I'm going to put his, uh, put the gun, and we'll put Yakomenko, and I have one more left, and I can put a Vagamov, and I'll put him in the, uh, I guess I'll put him in red. Okay, so now we go to the action phase. Obviously, I have my anti-tank gun. I'm going to use it. This is a uh, Panzer II, which has a relatively low defense rating of four. So we're going to attack this guy. And we had, we rolled five dice with the big, with our big gun here. And uh, the bonus of having, um, I believe it's uh, Sugbida, Subgaida, Sub yeah, Subgaida. We got a five and a six, so that was more than enough to kill him. That's cleared the board of German units. We now have a storm group card as well. So if we draw a, a, a command post card, we can play this and do a raid. If you look here, um, this particular one. The defense rating is 12. You get six victory points if you can do it. So the way it is is you pick, you put together like an assault team 
and you send them out and they attack this specific um, school number six. And if they can defeat the 12, then you, um, you get six victory points. And those six victory points can be the difference between losing and winning. Because typically the margin is pretty low. It's, a, it's not razor thin, but it's, it's pretty thin sometimes, um, at least in my experience. The problem is when you send out a storm group, you roll, uh, one to f- you roll a six-sider, and on a one to four, the participants get wounded. And if you don't have enough first aid to handle that, then you end up losing men. Um, you also get two dies per man if they have the storm ability, which... Uh, Pavlov has and um, some of my other guys have as well I think Namov has uh, does Namov have it's either Namov or Afanishev has that ability Um, so we go uh, let's see did I put yeah I put the wrong guy out I should have put he does have Storm Afanasyev has Storm Uh, I think Namov does maybe he does too it might all three guys might have it the problem is if you have you can do that and if you have three first aid kits then you know even if they get wounded you won't lose them so I'm always real cautious with the storm group and you can only do that during the card phase anyway but uh, since the card is here I just wanted to kind of point out what it is all right so um, we have one action remaining I can use it on Pavlov to either uh, reinforce or use command now if I use reinforce I can I can get my mortar into action um, but I'm not go- I'm going to use it use the command because I want to recover some people here so I'm going to use this and I'm going to recover this disrupted machine gun and I'm going to recover uh, hmm, which guy I guess Galshenko since he's got he covers two areas all right so now we move on to the card phase again all right so we got fog of war so we lose that but i do have two flotilla cards so i can load and deliver so let's do that so we're going to take uh we'll take a first aid a food and we only have two that's right because one of them is knocked out Uh, well we'll deliver these and then i'll recover the next time i get it so um yeah, I'm still short one food because I now have 13 defenders. And then with this one, I will play... Uh, I guess I'll play an anti-aircraft. So I get a rifleman, two riflemen, and machine gunners. Oh, because I have suppression on green, I can actually take a shot. So here's an example. We roll one die. If it's four or higher, we will kill this guy before he even gets here. And we rolled a two, so it didn't work. All right, so I'm going to put Afanishev out. I'll put him in spot one. So now I have two guys that I can recover units with. Gridden and uh, Chernyshenko are going to to hang out and um, wait. Maybe I, well... They don't have a gun to shoot. They don't have a mortar. So I think keeping them here is probably probably fine. Um, you know what? I'm going to put them out just in case I want to move some guys around. All right, so we're at the action phase now. And, uh, well, I do have some shots I can take. So I can take... Shot here. Now, looking at these guys, they're all kind of similar defensively, but the machine gunners are a little bit more dangerous because they have a two for suppression. So I'm going to shoot at them and knock them out because I saw them, I see them as the bigger threat. Now I have Chekhov and I can take out one of these other guys, or since I still, this is my last action, um, yeah, I'm going to do it. I, I, I was going to say I could recover Pavlov and and then next turn buy a mortar, but I'd rather kill off a German before more show up. So we'll take uh, we'll take this guy because it's more of a threat. So we're going to attack and knock him out, 
and so now they still only have one guy in here all right so so we have our flotilla i can repair this which i'm going to do let's recover this and then i'm going to recover one of my signal ones as well i have to click recover now i can do my reinforcements get my mortar which is worth doing i can put two more units into the house so let's do this let's go reinforce we're going to buy our mortar for two and then i'm going to buy now for four all right now it's the wehrmacht turn they're going to attack green wall attack failed it's placing a scout in five so now see they have two now so now if i buy, buy a far a forward observer and use an artillery i can actually drop artillery on these guys and probably kill both of them or hopefully kill both of them and the machine gunners are approaching so i can hit try again with uh suppression and we got it that time and so that was worth having because it killed them before you could show up all right so now i can put now mov in we'll drop him in on the uh, green side i'll take the mortar put that with these guys so now i have a mortar crew i can i can use and that's it so we're done with with that and uh yes i think i don't think i'm moving anybody around there's no need to all right so we do have some units up here unfortunately um, you can do mortar suppress, which gives you six points of suppression. So I might just use that, even though it's going to take two actions. Or I can take two shots at these guys, with these two guys at, up here. Um, but I'm just going to suppress for now. So now the purple wall has, um, six suppression points. And it took it took those down by a lot um, so now I have to try and get some ammunition over but anybody coming in on the purple wall I'll probably just use like two suppressions on each one so I get two die rolls to try and kill them um, I, I, I doubt I would try and stick you know like six in there or something um, and I'll use my Oh, that only used one action, actually. For some reason, I thought that would use two because there's two crewmen there, but um, maybe not. All right. Uh, so we'll take Gaushenko and... Actually, let me look at this for a second. It does use both guys. All right. Um, that's weird. Okay. Uh, we're going to attack, and we successfully did it. That's good. Now I'm going to recover... Uh, I'll use him to do a command and let's let's uh, let's remove let's re yeah and bring Chekhov back as well so now next turn I'll have an opportunity to again knock this guy out hopefully all right so we did get a flotilla so I'm gonna load up we're gonna load up food I need that food ASAP. Um, we'll take one of those three. I'm going to... Well, I've got one more. This is interesting. I've got one more. Oh, this is... Yeah, this is interesting. I can, I can put an artillery in. I don't need it, though. That's the thing, right? So let me put in any... Yeah, I'll put an anti-aircraft in, and I'll use this one to recover that one. And, okay. So now we see what we get. We get a Panzer. We get another Panzer. And we get a Rifleman. All right. Okay, so now the Germans are starting to uh, kind of fill in here. All right, so I don't have any... I don't really think I have anybody I want to move right now. So we can move on to the next phase. And you can see I got four moves now because I have all three. I have all three of my commanders out. I have Naumov, Afanashev, and Pavlov. So we're going to go to the 
action phase. And we are going to fire with uh, our machine gun. And we'll shoot at the scouts because you need a five to kill them. And we did get one. So the scouts are now dead. Um, I have an anti-tank gun, but it is currently uh, exhausted. So I can use Chekhov to take out this other rifleman, and I will do that. And now I will use um, Naumov. His command ability with my last action to recover my anti tank and uh, I guess it really doesn't matter. We'll go with Gaushenko again. All right, so back to the card phase. And okay, let's deliver our supplies. So now I'm safe from the next, um, the next feeding at the zoo, so to speak. All right, uh, let's take this and recover this other artillery location. And I can, re uh, yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to reload some supplies here. Oh, I could do storm group, but all these guys are exhausted. Like the men I would send out are exhausted. But this is the card you need to send out your storm group. And the red track is actually empty currently. So in theory, I could send them out, but I would be sending out, um, you know, like two guys or something. And you have to roll 12 for the defense. So... It's probably not a good idea to do that at the moment, and I won't. So we'll just use resupply. And I will take a first aid, because I want to have three first aids for when I do try this storm thing. It's going to be tough because it's red track, and the red track has three. So you, when typically after a rare mock turn, you end up having people on this track. <laughs> um, and... Let's bring, let's bring two food. Oops, I just shorted myself. I was thinking three and it was five. See, I make mistakes because I'm not thinking. <laughs> so, oh boy. All right, purple wall attack failed. So we do have a Stuka. Um, I'm going to hit it with both. We got two hits, so that will limit the damage a little bit. And they get a sniper, so now they're going to attack somebody. And they hit Glashenko, so now I can either let them die or I can use a first aid kit. So I'm going to use a first aid kit to keep them around. All right, so I don't have anybody to move. We're just going to kind of skip, I think. Yeah, because these are both Panzer threes, I think. Yeah. Panzer three, Panzer three. So we will use our any tank gun this turn on this guy, and then next turn I'll have to move them over to the purple side to attack this guy. So we're gonna skip to the action phase. So I know I want to do this. Hopefully I can roll a five. Nope. I hate when that happens. All right, so for my other actions, I'm going to recover Pavlov, and I'm going to recover um, yeah, I'll recover him as well. All right. Um, you know what? I'm going to, sh just because I'm going to, I want to show you a storm group, I'm actually going to do it. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go storm group. So these are the guys I can send. We're sending these two, um, and I'll send a Vagamov as well. And let's. And now I have one first aid, so this is a risk. I could end up losing one of these guys, which would be terrible. But I'm gonna hope the dice gods are in my favor. So let's go for it. So the assault was a great success, and all three guys got wounded. So I am going to lose uh, one of my one of my guys here. So this was 
in hindsight, probably not a great move. Um, we'll, we'll save Pavlov. Now, in hindsight, if I had not saved uh, Gaushenko, I could have saved both of these guys. But I did want to show what it looks like, so I picked up extra victory points for doing that. But I'm now, I've now cost myself um, someone I really needed. But them's the breaks. It's war. Stuff happens. And let's, uh, let's recover the other one. We supply. So that takes me down to no food available. We get an attack. Purple wall succeeded. And now we get a scout up here in track three. All right, so Pavlov's back. We'll put him here. Um, man, that was a bummer. All right. Uh, we'll skip. And we will go to... Uh, where are we going to go? Go to uh, I need to recover some people, so we're just gonna do a command and I'm gonna recover my tank, any tank gun, because I need it, and I'll recover Chekhov. And uh, I still have two actions, so we'll have Galshenko take a shot because we can, and it's not gonna kill him, but. It was worth a shot. And let me recover one of my... I'll recover one of my Mortarmen. Actually, what I should have done is recovered now, Mov, in hindsight, but too late now. Alright, so let's use this to load up. And we'll take... Uh, one first aid, two food. Then I'll use this, go reinforce. What else do we have that's worth having here? Uh, buy this and I will buy Anakin. And then I'm gonna reinforce again. And I need another machine gunner. And I'm going to buy a forward observer. So that's four. And maybe I'll buy Sukpa. Yeah, we'll buy Sukpa. So that's six. Okay. And we got four damages coming up, so I'm probably going to lose one, one or more of these. Oh, two hits, so that's good. So we lost one any Yep, I was right. We lost one of our food. And now we have two there, so I'm glad I bought the uh, the forward observer because this is now a this is now a potential uh, target for the artil uh, the artillery. All right, so we know we have another machine gun that we can place. The only problem is, well, I could put it here for now, I guess. So we'll put him there, and put him there, and we'll put him there, and um, Potansky. I don't really have a spot for him yet, so I might just leave him be. I also don't have an artillery uh, ready to fire either. But they have three units in this in this track now, so this is becoming kind of a uh, hairy situation. Um, Yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna move on to the next phase. I'll put this guy out. Why not? Uh, no, <laughs> I've done that before, and that's uh, that's bad. 
So, <laughs> not going to do that. All right. Uh, well, we do have our anti-tank gun, so we're going to attack the armor. And fa Oh, we got him that time. So that was good. That was definitely worth, uh, worth doing. Now with my other action, um, I'm going to recover Pavlov. All right. Oh, this is rough. This is really rough. I've got one I can use. Well, let's use it for any aircraft, I guess. Um, we don't know what those are. I get a Stug. Again, in track one. Attack on the green wall failed. Attack on the green wall succeeded. All right. Uh... We don't have anybody to move. I'm going to use him to uh, command. Let's put... Uh, so we cover these two. And we cover... I'm going to recover my other mortarmen so I can swap them to the other side. I want to put some suppression down. And... I can use, I have two actions remaining. So we'll recover, we'll recover Naumov, and we're gonna use Chekhov to shoot this guy. All right, so the cards left is what tells you how long, how, once that gets to zero, the game will end. Um, once This is the German deck, essentially. All right, so now we've got, let's see here. Um, well, we do have artillery. So let's crank this up. We're going to uh, ready artillery. And then I think I'm going to actually recover one as well. And then I'm going to take my anti-aircraft. And I'm going to ready it. Now if I get an air attack, I have two two shots because I want to defend this artillery. Uh, combat location purple 2. So that's here. He disrupted my mortar crew. Attack on a red wall failed. And they get another rifleman. All right. Okay, so I'm going to put Potansky in. And I'm going to put him on the green wall. And then I'm going to put Naumov here and move on to the action phase. So now we're going to take Potansky, we're going to use his forward observer, we're going to select our artillery, and we're going to hit these two guys right here. Or should I go for the... Well, I do have an anti-tank gun, but it's not ready. I'm going to go for the... For the two machine gunners. They're more likely to be killed. Their defense is only a four. And we got them both. Hence the uh, the king of the battlefield. Artillery. Alright. Um, that's what you call doing some damage. Uh, and I can use... Well, see. Part of the thought was if I had... And in hindsight, if I had kept... If I had just used it on the Stug, I would have killed the Stug and one of the machine gunners, and I could have used my machine gun on the other machine gunner. But I'm not sure I want to do that anyway. I might leave this guy for the moment. Um, because... I might want to use... I want to use one on Pavlov to recover him. This is a... Oh, now we have a green storm group. Uh, hmm, decisions, decisions. You know what? Let's kill this guy. Or should I do suppression? Maybe I should do suppression. I can do suppression with this one. And suppress the green track. Or do I want to suppress the red track? Let's suppress. What's the? How much suppression does it give? Four. 
This one gives three, I think. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I'm going to suppress the green track. Oh, look at that. Huh. Well, let's do that. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. All right. Ugh, these fog of war kill you, man. Well, let's, uh... Hmm. Interesting. Let's see what's under this guy. Uh, oh, I forgot to hit the... <laughs> oh, boy. I'm an idiot. All right. So, so much for that. Um... Another Panzer, and another Panzer, and a Sniper. Sniper attack on the red wall. And I don't have any first aid, so if it hits, I lose a man. I guess we'll go with Chait. He's easier to replace. And it was, he did, I didn't lose him, so that's good. All right. So we're in the movement phase now, and I don't really have anybody to move. So we're just going to skip. So now we're in the action phase. Let's recover Pavlov. I'm gonna take Namov and use his command ability and I'm going to recover my anti-tank and check off. I have one more I can use. Let's recover uh our artillery guy. <coughs> All right, so let's deliver our let's deliver our supplies here. Uh, no, well, it's too late now. In hindsight, I should have delivered food. Um, okay. Well, it is what it is. We will ready another anti-aircraft. So now I have three. So Okay, so we get an assault. So we have green, which has nothing. Uh, they failed to, to get the red. They, didn't go, they don't have anything in purple. Attack on the green wall succeeded. So that's down to a four now. Red wall failed, purple wall succeeded. So that's down to a three. All right. That is not good. And again, another panzer. All right. Okay. And then they get a bomb run. So I'm going to see if I can. I'm just going to go the whole hog on this and knock them out. All right, so I don't have anything. Oh, I do want to move. I'm going to move Potansky to the red track. And then we'll put Chekhov. Uh, I guess we'll put Chekhov on the green track for now, even though there's no unit there. We'll go on to the action phase, and we're going to call in an artillery attack on this track right here. We didn't get a six, but we did kill the rifleman. So that works. <clears throat> so they still have four tanks out there. I've got one anti-tank gun I can use here. So let's attack it. Uh, I guess we'll go here and nothing. Two fours needed, needed a five. All right, so let's deliver. Wow. Uh, hmm. This is interesting. Well, why not? Uh, 
Ugh. Terrible. Uh, this is terrible. So who do I want to lose? Honestly, nobody. But I don't have a choice. So choose six who won't receive rations. Two, three, four, uh, five, six. Because I'm gonna, I have three, so I'll actually only lose three. So we're gonna keep him. We're gonna keep him. we'll lose those two. Where's Sukba? There's Sukba. So, yeah, we'll do that, I guess. So that sucked. Um, power of food. And now we got a bomb run coming in, of course. Sniper attack on the red wall. And Ivashenko was killed. Oh, man. All right. Well, let's move some people around here. So we got a bunch of tanks, but no. Well, let's put Chekhov. Let's move him here. It's really the only one I can reasonably move. That was rough. That was really rough. Um, damn, because I was, well, I don't have anybody. I don't have any shots right now anyway. So we're going to use Pavlov to uh, command. And we will recover our anti-tank gun because we need it. It's the only one we have. And I'd like to put more suppression down with my mortar, but I don't need to at the moment. Uh, let's see. All right. And we'll recover him. And I'm going to recover Varnov. Or I can do one of the mortar guys. Let's do the other machine gunner. Cover. All right. Well, I can re reinforce. What I need to do, though, is get some food over here. Stat. And I have to recover it first, so... Alright, um, I think I'm going to just do some recovery. Stug, Assault. Green wall took a hit. It's down to three. Red wall failed. Purple wall succeeded. So now the purple wall is in trouble. Uh, oh, man. Row five. We have two suppression there. And we didn't suppress them. Yeah, I'm taking a beat and now I was doing well and now it's now it's bad because I didn't place anybody I didn't place any of these guys and I can't do it until I get an eighth 
a, a sapper on the next card phase. Um, yeah, this is tough now. What to do here? Uh, ugh, all right. Well, let's recover him, and let's recover him, and let's recover him, and go to the card phase. All right, so first thing we need to do is we need to buttress purple. And I need bodies. This is uh, this is bad. I lost both my mortar men, so the mortar is now out of action. Um, man, I can do whole lev. I need a machine gunner as well, so we'll take a machine gunner. And we'll take, uh, well, maybe I won't take a machine gunner. I'm going to take another anti-tank unit here. I need one. So I'm going to take an anti-tank plus him and him. Confirm. And then because we can... Uh, should I? Well, I might as well take a shot at it, I guess. Ah, oh, got him. Okay, yeah, things are, uh, things are hairy here. They're down to eight cards, though, but um, my score is now a negative four because I took so many losses. Uh, all right, so any tank guns. Let's go here. I should have gone there, but too late now. And I think that's all I'm going to do. All right, action phase. Well, we're gonna take a shot. Uh, options aren't great, but we're gonna take a shot right here. All right, so that that was good. Now we can take Naumov and do command and get him back and get. Uh, I guess we'll take care of Scuba as well. All right, let's see here. I don't have a 60 second, of course, because I could really use some food or something. Oh boy, let's see. Um, you know what? The hell with it. I'm going to bring in some some guys to just man positions here. And then we will uh, recover this guy. And we'll ready this guy and be done. We get a machine gunner, another machine gunner, and another panzer. All right. Uh, so I have what three open spots? So we'll take Hoalov and put him here. Shapovalov will go there. Sarilev will go there. Okay, now uh, let's see. We have we want Polanski, forward observer. Take that and put it uh, here. Fire 
Panzer and Scout both destroyed. So that's good. And uh, I should have bought the other Observer in hindsight, but too late now. Um, now, what else? I can take Hohalov and take a shot. I can make a, take a shot with Chekhov as well. So let's do that. I'll take a shot with Chekhov here. And take a shot with Hohalov here. And not. Wait, oh. Hohalov attack here. Alright. That was a decent turn for recovering some of that stuff there. Reducing the dam the, the danger, although the, the purple track is still a hairy situation. All right, so, well, let's use a command post. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to buttress the green. And then I'm going to uh, do a field defense here. And then I'm going to load some supplies. Take three food. And that. Commit. All right. Rifleman. Ugh. It's not good. Uh, I'm not going to move anything, I don't think. Yeah, I'm okay. Oh. Didn't I buy a machine gunner? machine gunner. Let's just do that. Um, they appear to be short of machine gunner. Yeah, all right. Okay, so now what do we need to do here? We need to kill somebody if we can. So let's take our armor here. Take a shot at one of these guys and hope for the best and we actually succeeded so that's good all right now we need to do a recovery with Pavlov so let's, uh, let's recover him and Okay, uh, hmm, let's take a sapper, our last sapper, we're gonna put him, uh, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't do this. Put them there, I guess. All right, we're gonna take an artillery, stick it there, and we're gonna take an anti-aircraft and stick it there, and hope for the best. No hits, of course. Two, three, and they they bombed us out. So we lost because of bombing. Ugh, brutal way to lose the game, but. That's the way the cookie crumbles. So, that's it. Um, didn't go as well as I hoped. I think I fell I fell apart on the uh, getting the food supplies in there. That really uh, turned the momentum against me. I also failed to uh, 
defend the walls well enough by buttressing um, buttressing them. So in the end, mistakes happen. Um, I feel like I did okay in general. I did have a six score if it wasn't for the bombing there. I mean, if my uh, any aircraft had scored one, just one hit, I probably would have ended up winning the game in a minor victory. But like I said, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So that will do it. I hope you enjoyed. Um, thank you for watching. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, my name's Joe. This is Hexed Encountered, and happy gaming.